asked, what drew you to Jayanti Naik's writing? Well, I'd say that they're nice stories. They're great stories to read. They're stories about very ordinary people, about common people, about the, they are the people who are the salt of the earth. I, you know, they aren't the usual story that we uh, hear about from Goa. We usually have a, a, lots of people, okay, all over, all over have this idea that, uh, I have a stereotyped idea of Goa, perhaps uh, uh, encouraged by the Hindi films that we see that are set here. These are different. These are stories which are more Indian in, in their nature. And uh, they are very interesting. They are sad stories, many of them. But they, they touch you to a great deal. Uh, there are about 11 stories there. But each of them, I think, while being very Indian in character, they are also very Christian in their uh, conception. I liken them to being variations on the biblical story of Job. You know, I, I think many of you would be aware of how Job was a wealthy man whom the God, God decided to uh, test. Well, many of these stories tell are, are are about people who are put to severe test by life, by time, and they, they are tragic in a way like that, you know, the, the tragedies of Oedipus and King Lear are, and hence they touch you, and it made me want to tell those stories again in English. Did you read them in English? Yes. What was the type reading? What was the type reading of the story in another language? Actually, uh, my many stories are translated in Marathi, Hindi, and now in English. <laughs> Vidya Pai is here. She has also translated some stories. My, uh, many, uh, I think three or four stories she has translated. But uh, the stories which uh, August has selected are, uh, for me, they are very uh, special stories, I say. And uh, he has taken much efforts to, with us, uh, to give that original flavor which are in Konkani. And uh, I read almost all the stories because uh, after his translation he has to uh, just send me first and uh, he has to take uh, yeah checking <laughs> checking because see um, in my many stories there is uh, folk concepts are there and as i am a folklorist my study is in this subject i i need perfect that exactly translation so so that also he has done but uh, I like the his translation. Before him also, uh, one person, I am not uh, opening his name here, but he has done, um, I think, more than 10 of my stories. He has translated. And I was trying to bring that in English. But then uh, I realized they are not came up to that level. So then I met August. First I met Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick brought. <laughs> Patrick, <laughs> Patrick came with August. <laughs> August. And both, I always say, I am the third party in this book. First party is uh, August, second is Patrick, and I am third party. Okay? It's a good production as per my uh, knowledge. Yeah? Okay, thank you very much. I thank to August and Patrick also, and you also, sir. I want to. Uh, I would like to ask you about uh, 
translating, for instance, Uma and the human sacrifice. You know, one of the particular challenges of working with in uh, this story, there is a, a woman who's worked in the Department of Art and Culture of the Goa of the Goa government, who has been invited to meet her, man, her old friend from college. They studied together at Pune University many, many years ago. And her friend has said, come and see me now, uh, you know, as married, I have children, come and meet them all. And you can also, as a Leo, she says, there is a sacrifice of Akai Parvat. On Akai Parvat, where the Bhagats cut off their own heads in honor of the goddess who cut off her own head on this Parvat for reasons that I antiquity explained in a bit. Now, uh, when I was reading the story, I was struck by how many different layers and levels there are in it. Because there is subterfuge, there is uh, deception on the human level, what the friend has done to uh, her own story, how she's retold her story, what the myths are. And there's also reference to a Goan tradition where men will lie down with their heads touching each other. Am I getting this right? Shisharani. 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 And rice will be cooked on a fire in the middle with all their heads touching the fire. Now, um, if, have you been there? Yeah. Have you ever witnessed the Shishara? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell us about this, because I'm sure everyone's fascinated. <laughs> <laughs> This one is working. This tradition is still going on in Kankon. During Shigmo festival, uh, they, uh, they prepare a mock. Actually, it is a mock, I say today. A mock Shisharani. Shish means head. And Rani means chula. So then, uh, put it three, three heads in slaying three men. Uh, with that, uh, they prepare that um, chula. So they make that chula and prepare uh, rice on that. It is still going on. So, what were the particular, um, you know, when you're translating a story like this, one, why did you choose it? And two, what were the particular challenges of choosing a story that is alien, I think, to the English language, certainly, and doing to the Anglophone world, but also still surprising to the Konkani world? I'm sure even. Konkani people reading this will think, what? What do they, they really do this? Yeah, I guess that is one of the, the problems of translating in, uh, one culture into another. This simply, there simply isn't that kind of a concept in English. So, we, we have to almost wholesale borrow that and make it English and understand it as the Goan from there would understand it. Of course, we, even to me, this and several other concepts which come up, uh, folk concepts like this, uh, are, are big challenges as to how do you try and, uh, you know, get it, get that concrete flavor into English. And ma'am, for you when you're writing the stories, uh, you obviously, I mean, even in Puma and the Human Sacrifice, uh, the Shisharani and the Akai Parvat story are the background to the human story of Uma and her friend. So how do you bring these two together? <laughs> As I say, this is what the writer's technique. Well, so... The <laughs> <laughs> this is secret. Oh. I can't <laughs> it's like the Shisha Rangi. How they do it, you don't know, but it is done. <laughs> And go eat the chawal, <laughs> which is cooked on the chula. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so I think that's the uh, one of the one of the things that you will get out of Jayanti's and Augusto's uh, and Frederick, as since Ma'am has said that he's also part of the deal. Out of this book is the an underlap. I mean, there is one Goa which we have been sold regularly, which is kind of the beach Goa, the the you know the Sosegard Goa the Goa of the Portuguese villa and the Goa of the of um, someone with a name like Suarez, Ribeiro, Rangel, Parara, la 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 <laughs> Lots of lovely Portuguese sounds rolling about. Right? Pinto. Pinto also? 
the gamma rose up in the boy all those happy sounds and then there's another one which is kind of uh, uh, the stories of uh, of carmelin and of the, um, of that level of goa but there's also one beneath that this is almost as if it is a subterranean goa that we're talking about and uh, i'd like you to talk about that augusto because augusto pinto the moira is really part of that you know <laughs> top level of <laughs> so how do you to these stories i see them as uh, manifestations of a class of goans who have been silent for many centuries uh, as you're saying you know we think of goa in terms of uh, you know all these churches and forts and all these lovely houses and and uh, and the people who, who we build them we think of a, of the, as those elite but who lifted those stones to put them there and who are the people who served them and who worked in their fields we don't normally talk too much about them they, they are the, the silent uh, masses of goan society i think however that since liberation this group of people have been slowly asserting themselves politically certainly as uh, after liberation uh, they they became far more the, the politically do dominant class in a sense okay the, uh, the uh, you could call them the bahujan samaj okay a, a group especially of the, the the hindu lower castes and classes and uh, i think it, it is time that their stories also get to be known for their human stories okay you don't have to be a king to have the kind of emotional crises that people like you know the 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 baswa the nandi uh, man who pulled the uh, a nandi pull and the kind of tragedies that he had to overcome we realize that even these people these so called poor Uh, underprivileged people had to face these kinds of uh, crises and and problems too you know in my own translation practice for instance i'm now doing babura bagul who is a marathi writer and it's very odd when i was reading the story uh, the baswa story the one here i was immediately reminded of bohara which is a, a, a story by bagul which way a mahar comes to the center of the of the village and says mala song ho ani te pan vishnu cha song meaning he wants a song which is a sacrifice and a sacrifice of a bullock the bullock is taken to the center of the of the of the skin it is ritually slaughtered and its blood then pours out and all the the leaves have to be soaked with it and these leaves of course are the leaves that represent gold actually so you're fertilizing with the blood of the bullock you're fertilizing the the wealth of the village you're making it rich again and then after that the song is danced which is you dress up in full avatar giri literally you you become the pandavas you become ram and sita you become lakshman and ravan you become the whole lot and you dance through the village in procession it's it sounds like a fascinating um, a fascinating world actually and to draw this world into the world of the everyday to see where the intersection of these two worlds happens this moment when the transcendent and the and the divine meets with the ordinary and the human that's where i think the power of uh uh jayanti naik stories rests at least for me uh would you like to do another short reading another short reading man maybe from one of those stories the basco yeah basco yeah 10 minutes left oh sorry kya re bolna chahiye na no you have some more time okay so maybe they can 